Hey guys, so I am an educator at Unacademy and you can follow me over there if you are interested to watch videos on basic concepts of chemistry or physical chemistry topics. You can also recommend this to your juniors and to your younger siblings, right? All you need to do is download the Unacademy learning app and watch my videos over there. Now let's just begin with our topic. Right, so very good evening to you guys. Today we are going to talk about Peterson olefination. All right. Now in Peterson reaction, um, there is one thing important that you need to know that we have alpha silyl carbon ions. All right. So this is an alpha silyl carbon ion, and when an alpha silyl carbon ion reacts with a ketone, like I've shown you over here, uh, we get beta hydroxy silanes. All right. We get beta hydroxy silanes. Now you might be wondering that why am I using this terminology, right? Because See, you, I can basically say, uh, you know, a silyl group present adjacent to the hydroxy group. This is also I can say, but I'm using this term beta hydroxy silane. Now, why am I using this term? See, every uh, every profession has its own, uh, you know, terminology. Like for example, if if I talk about medical field, uh, instead of saying uh, he's he's having a higher heart rate, a person a doctor says he's having tachycardia, right? So these are the terminologies that different professions use, and it's it's good that if you know those terminologies even though there's no uh, like uh, there's no problem even if you don't know about it but still it's better if you are a chemist you should know the terminologies right so this is a alpha silyl carbon ion all right so this is the silyl group this over here is the silyl group and at the alpha position at the alpha carbon we have a negative charge that's a carbon ion so that's why this is called as a alpha silyl carbon ion and when alpha silyl carbon ion attacks the ketone over here this is the ketone we get beta hydroxy silanes okay and why is it called beta hydroxy because see this is you can say this is the alpha carbon and this is the beta carbon and then we have a hydroxy group at the beta carbon so that's why it's called beta hydroxy silane now the important step in this is this uh the, the basically the geometry so first of all we are adding acid in this case you can see and in this case in this one over here on the lower side we are adding base so it leads to different kinds of products and we'll see how all right so first of all if we i'll talk about the acid acid case this is the acid case so when i add acid to this um, beta hydroxy silane what happens is this h plus the h plus that is there it protonates this hydroxy group okay hydroxy group has lone pair of electrons so this h plus basically protonates this hydroxy group all right it once it protonates the hydroxy group it leads to the formation of um, this compound over here this is oxonium ion right and oxonium ion is a very good leaving group so now what happens the water that is present since we are adding acid acid is basically h plus in water right it's aqueous solution so then once h plus protonates the hydroxy group we have water in the solution this water attacks this silyl group and this silyl group then uh, you know th this bond gets broken and similarly you can see with the arrows i have shown this bond gets broken the carbon silicon bond and it leads to the c double bond c and then we have elimination of water so we have elimination of water and then we get this final alkene over here which is basically a cis alkene in this case in this case we are getting a cis alkene now what is important over here is you have to see that since this reaction is taking place this is an anti periplanar arrangement now what do you mean by anti periplanar that both the leaving groups this silyl group and this hydroxy group this oxonium ion they both are in opposite planes so this is favored this is an anti periplanar elim elimination you can see you can say right so this is an anti periplanar elimination and this is the favored transition state all right so in case uh, you get a compound where the silyl group and this hydroxy group are in the same plane in case you get such a compound where the hydroxy group uh, this this oxonium ion and this silyl group are in the same plane then you have to arrange the geometry such that both are both of them are in opposite planes for the elimination to take place all right and uh, these things will get clearer as i solve more questions regarding peterson elimination now let's let's talk about the basic condition what will happen when when i use a base so when i use a base what will the base do it will abstract the most acidic proton now the most acidic proton in this case is this hydrogen attached to the oxygen right this oh proton so this will get uh, so this base will abstract this proton and we get will get o minus over here right we'll get o minus now what will happen is um, this O minus will bind to the silicon because a oxygen silicon bond is very very stable all right it's a very stable bond so this O minus will like to bind to this silicon now the problem over here is that this silicon is um, in in the different plane and this oxygen is in a different plane all right 
uh, okay so what i'll do is i'll try to show it to you on with the some different color over here okay so i'll just write it down over here see we have this o minus over here right then we have this r1 group below the plane and then we have a r2 group above the plane okay and then we have this silicon group silicon r3 si r3 and then we have r3 group below the plane and then hydrogen above the plane so the problem is this o minus will like to bind to the silicon but the silicon is uh, in the opposite plane so now what we need to do is we need to change the plane we need to change this plane we need to bring the silicon in the plane of oxygen and how can we do we can do that by inverting this carbon this carbon over here this carbon over here we will invert this carbon so if we, if we invert this carbon what will happen is let me draw the structure we'll have o minus like this and then we have a carbon hydrogen will be below the plane and now this r group will come above the plane okay this r group will come above the plane and then we'll have silicon over here sir3 and this group will remain as it is this will be r1 and this will be r2 so what is happening over here i have just inverted this carbon i have taken this carbon now this hydrogen is above the plane so you have to imagine this hydrogen is coming towards you this hydrogen is coming towards you and this r3 group over here is going away from you that is inside the screen of a mobile if you are watching it on a mobile this r3 group is going inside the mobile the hydrogen is coming out of the mobile towards you and the silicon is in the plane so if i invert this carbon the hydrogen which was coming towards me will now go behind me okay i am inverting this carbon i am inverting it like this so the silicon now is on the top you can see over here the silicon is on the top and now if this hydrogen which was coming towards you it will get inverted and go away from you and similarly this r3 group which was earlier coming going away from you will come towards you once i inverted by 180 right i'm just inverting this carbon by 180 and i get this compound right now this o minus can easily bind to the silicon and that's what i've shown in this particular in in this particular thing in this particular transition state right so now what is happening is basically your um, O minus can easily bind to the silicon and form a four membered ring. So, over here, this is what I have shown. This is a four membered ring that is formed. And now, what happens? This silicon oxygen bond is very, very stable. So, it will get eliminated as this SiO minus Si double bond O, you can say R3. And along with that, we'll have a alkene over here. So, finally, we'll get the alkene. But the stereo, but the, but the geometry of this alkene is opposite to the geometry we had, we had uh, seen in the acid case. So, in the acid case, the geometry was cis. Uh, but over here if you see the geometry it is trans okay so over here it is trans in the other case it was cis if i am if i am giving r1 the higher priority uh, if i compare r1 and r2 if i give r1 the higher priority then this is cis case and in this case i am giving r since i am giving r1 the higher priority so r1 is trans to r3 and so this is the trans case so all you need to know in this uh, reaction is that in case we are using an acid we are getting a cis geometry in this case and 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 if we are using a base then we are getting a trans geometry all right so it is not obvi obviously the case that if you use the acid you will always get the cis geometry it will depend on the compound that is given to us so you have to uh, depend on the compound that is given to it given to you it is not necessary that when you when we use the acid we'll get a cis geometry and when we use a base we'll get a trans geometry it is not always so all right it will always depend on our reactant but all you need to know is that for acid the arrangement should be anti periplanar uh, that is the OH2 group that, that is the hydroxy group and the silicon group should be in the opposite planes and in case of uh, base uh, base, base assisted Peterson, Peterson olefination um, the, the hydroxy group and the silyl group should be in the same plane so this is the mandatory condition in case of basic medium, basic medium and in case of acid medium the mandatory condition is that the hydroxy group and the silicon should be in opposite planes right so accordingly uh, you will get the stereochemistry but this is for sure that the stereochemistry in both the cases that is in case, case of acid and in case of base will be different will be opposite right so i hope you found this video useful and in a short while i'll also be uploading some questions which are relevant to peterson all definition which were asked in a lot of entrance exams uh, like your gate and net exam so i'll be discussing that in my next video right so thank you so much for watching and uh, stay tuned for my next video